Coming up on Look Today, well, a village of Lake George received a grant of $45,000 for outdoor streetscapes. I'll explain that. And Congresswoman Elise Stefanik joins the bipartisan caucus to bring broadband access to rural parts of our district. More on that coming up. And Gateway House, a piece in Boston Spa, will host a fundraiser to benefit the organization. I've got those details. It's all ahead on Look Today. Welcome everyone, I'm Jay Hood Jackson and this is Look Today. In tonight's program, I sit down with Elizabeth Sobel. She's a president of the Saratoga Performing Arts Center and she's here to talk about the 2017 classical season in part one of my interview with her. I also sit down with Tony Garcia. Now he's a public information officer for the American Legion Post 233 in Glens Falls. He's here to talk about an upcoming series of public forums at the Crandall Library. Plus, we've got your weather for the Tri-North Counties. But first, these headline stories. Well, in our lead story, the village of Lake George received a grant of $45,000 from the state of New York. The money will go toward improving the streetscape near the gateway to the city and the village on Route 9. The work encompasses three large blocks, from McGillis Avenue to Mohican Street. Now, the streetscape will include new lighting, landscaping, and brick pavement. We spoke to Mayor Bob Lees about the impact these projects will have on tourism. Well, the village has uh, actually uh, completed the lakefront walkway and the main street. And in any community, particularly a resort community, you have to continually upgrade your facilities. People, uh, when they come to a resort area, want to see something new and fresh. Uh, the same old thing doesn't work. It doesn't bring them back again. In other news, well, here's a story that we're going to be covering extensively. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik and a bipartisan coalition of 71 members of the House of Representatives have sent a letter to President Donald Trump urging him to include rural broadband in the infrastructure plan. Now, according to the congresswoman, broadband is becoming less of a luxury and more of a necessity in our interconnected world. Well, we're in conversation with her office about interviewing and getting footage of her speaking on the House floor. We'll keep you posted on this story. Switching from news to weather, well, today saw a mix of rain and snow. Expect more sleet later on tonight. Let's see how the rest of the week is shaping up. For a more detailed look at our weather, we're going to head to the Glens Falls Weather Center for a look at your first forecast. Thank you, Jesse. Well, as we jump into our first look weather center forecast update, continue to look pretty active weather pattern across much of the board. Some showers, thunderstorms developing, some severe weather down across the southeast. And we're going to continue to see an active pattern here, mostly dumping some heavier snowfall to our north and heavier showers across the rest of the region. You see some icing mixing in, but then we're going to be watching a range of temperatures right there around the freezing mark, at least here across much of upstate New York and across the tri-north counties should see temperatures right there between about 31 and 34 degrees and I expect to see mostly everything falling in the form of rain at least across the lower elevations. Some higher elevations could see a bit of a wintry mix and then some snowfall as you start to head towards some of the mountain peaks. That's good news for the ski resorts as they're going to continue to see plenty of moisture over the next 12 to 18 hours. We'll see the clouds hang around for the daytime tomorrow. Nice surge in temperatures warming up rather quickly. It's about 48 to 49 degrees in a few spots. The south wind doing its job cloudy skies keeping us pretty insulated. So for the daytime tomorrow, we'll see limited sunshine, chance of showers. Keep the umbrella handy. We'll start off in the 40s, and as we continue on over the next couple of days, that warm air does not last for long. 26 degrees Thursday, Friday, 24, and heading into the weekend once again, could see a few more snowflakes or rain showers flying, and a very cold stretch of nights on the way with a morning low of 8 on Friday and 17 degrees on Saturday morning. So we're going to be seeing a bit of a temperature roller coaster, but for right now, we're on the upward track. That's it from the Weather Center. Now back to you, Jesse. Oh, thanks, Brent. Where is the snow? Back to the news. Well, Gateway House of Peace in Balsam Spa is hosting a fundraising event on March 10th. Now, the funding for the charity organization is 100% donor driven. The organization is dedicated to providing a safe, comfortable, and caring home free of charge for those who are terminally ill. 
Yeah. We spoke to Joni Hanchett. She's a founder and board member of Gateway House of Peace. Our services are free of charge and we do not receive any state or federal funding or insurance reimbursement. So we totally rely on donations and fundraising. So this fundraising event, along with all our fundraising events, are very, very important to the organization. Now the fundraiser is called the Pint and Dagger Irish Pub Murder Mystery. You got that? And the event is happening on March 10th. Now again, all the proceeds go to benefit the charity. We spoke to Mark Hirsch. He's a producer of the murder mystery. The town of Milton Community Center will be converted into the Pint and Dagger Irish Pub. And that's where the murder will take place. Uh, um, they'll be welcomed in. We'll have live music playing when they arrive. There'll be food, drinks. And then at a certain point, I'll gather them all together. I will be the Irish pub owner. You know, these murder mysteries are always fun to attend. I've been to a few of them. So uh, you can be guaranteed it'll be a fun evening. But then again, think about the organization. That's a great organization. All right. Up next, I sit down with Elizabeth Sobel. She's a president of the Saratoga Performing Arts Center. She's here to talk about the 2017 classical and jazz season. Plus, I also sit down with Tony Garcia. He's a public information officer for the American Legion Post 233 in Glens Falls. And he's here to talk about an upcoming series of public forums in Glens Falls. But first, if you see news happening, you want to share a story idea. How about join us for an interview? Give us a call on the hotline. The number is 798-8000. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Look Today. Uh, I've got a couple of corrections here. Um, I mentioned that that American Legion lecture series uh, is at Crandall Library. It's not. It's at the uh, Salvation Army. And secondly, I referred to Lake George as a city. I don't know what the heck I was thinking about, but Lake George is a village or a town. So that gateway that they're creating kind of connects the two. All right, moving on. Uh, I've got a couple of lookouts tonight. Uh, first one goes to Elizabeth Sobel, the new president of SPAC. Just talking to her is inspiring. A lot of changes going on at SPAC, and I'm hoping that a lot of people will come back. I'm also hoping that a lot of people will try it for the first time because an awful lot of thought is going into the programming. I can tell you firsthand. Um, and also, uh, look out goes to Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. This broadband initiative, this bipartisan um, initiative in the House of Representatives could not be more important to the rural parts of the Tri-North Counties and she's very dedicated to it. I was talking to her office today about it. And uh, last but not least, any of you who have had any interaction with government agencies knows it can be challenging. Let's just leave it at that. Well, the last lookout goes to Hillary Brown. She works out of the Social Security office in Queensbury there. And I had to go up there today for something. You know, you hold your breath when you go in and you think, uh-oh, here we go, all the bureaucrats and whatever. Hillary could not have been nicer, more thorough in helping me pick the best option for myself and my wife moving forward. So Hillary, thank you very much for your help. You did a great job. All right, tonight on Look TV, it's a Queensbury Town Board meeting. And don't forget, tune in tomorrow night for the stories that matter to you. Good night, everyone.